is loading. I think we are already live. Yeah. Yes. So welcome everyone. Welcome to this amazing program. So Teach for Bangladesh is welcoming all the guests of to this to this amazing event that is going to be happen within like uh, next one and half year, uh, half hours. So welcome everyone. Today we are live with some of the most inspiring leaders of North South University. So I want to introduce all the leaders that have joined already with our program. So I want to introduce Mr. Ryan Ahmed, who is the president of North South University Communications Club. Uh, Mr. Asif Arafat, who is the president of North South University Young Economist Forum. And we also have Mr. Mahadi Hassan Khan, head of communications uh, of North South University Social Service Club. So we also have our accepted fellow, Samri Nadiba Rahman, who was selected as a fellow for 2022 cohort of Teach for Bangladesh and who is also an NACU alum. And I'm here as a moderator and also I'm Pritam Chakraborty. I'm associate of recruitment and selection team of Teach for Bangladesh. And we also have Shujon Daring Bhaiya, who is the manager of recruitment and selection team of Teach for Bangladesh. So we are going to jump into a panel discussion where we will have lots of discussion around leadership in crisis moment. And we'll see lots of demonstrations of amazing leadership around North South University campus and also Teach for Bangladesh and where fellows are working tremendously to eradicate education inequity and also making social impact during this corona pandemic time. So today we will know about the initiative and strategies that clubs are taking to continue their work even in this pandemic situation. They will also let us know about how their leadership, the skills among the South University. Then Teach for Bangladesh will also demonstrate the transformations that fellows are bringing in our schools and communities in this pandemic situation. As an organization, we believe in transformational leadership, which brings positive changes in the society. And also we are looking for the country's most promising leaders to take on the new challenges of rebuilding our nation. So let's jump into our panel discussion today. So first of all, I would like to invite Mr. Asif Arafat, who is the president of North South University Young Economist Forum. So uh, welcome, Mr. Arafat. I hope you are doing well. Yeah. So Mr. Arafat, my question to you is like, as we know, North South University Young Economist Forum which is one of the most known clubs of North South University in terms of like launching and winning new competitions, developing the skills of their members and also collecting huge amount of sponsorship from corporate giants. So how do you plan and execute the strategies to mentor your club members and also to organize big events and webinars to collect sponsorships, even in this pandemic situation to like uphold the glory of this amazing club? So basically, by uh, first, we, I'd like to thank Teach for Bangladesh for having me here. And uh, on that same note, I'd like to give a shout out to Mena Zapu, who is a EF alum, who is working on Teach on Teach on Bangladesh and doing an amazing work. And also Teach for Bangladesh for giving this um, amazing opportunity to people to join them and take and take part in carrying carrying out this noble cause. And also, I'd like to give a shout out to all the EFRs who are watching. Thank you all who's watching. And coming back to your question, Pritumbha. So basically, when the pandemic started, uh, first and foremost, what we did was we did we started our do donations, right? To and we were actually among the first to act uh, among the youth. And we were given a lot of credit for it. And then basically uh, jumping ahead when we were approaching the new normal, we, uh, we, conduct, uh, we conducted some small scale uh, events, uh, but nothing too large. But uh, then uh, when our term basically started, we were faced with a lot of challenges 
because of the online situation and uh, on campus, a, a lot of things were different. We had our club rooms where members could bond with each other and where they would grow fondness of the club to actually work for the club. So that was a very big challenge. So when we first identified it and then we ha had our recruitment, in this case, it, it was very different as well because this was the first online recruitment and everyone was basically you could say exhausted, exhausted academically and given everything that has been happening. And on top of that, that they're recruited to a club and who don't really, we haven't really seen each other, right? So that was a big priority to overcome that challenge. And to overcome that challenge, what we first did was we started member feedback. We uh, online member feedback, where we asked the members uh, themselves to give their opinions on how we could uh, give them a platform to interact, how we could uh, increase bonding am among them. And we had some really good ideas. For example, we had Discord movie nights where we would just uh, like watch movies, watch games, football games and whatnot. This were, what this did was basically give us uh, uh, an opportunity to interact and bond, which we didn't have because we don't have a club now, club room now. Where where all the bonding actually takes place. So basically, uh, gradually, and then gradually we started to host workshops and uh, skill development programs, our skill development program called Ascend, under which we hosted a lot of workshops and intra ef competitions, such as writing and uh, other software skills that, that is necessary. So uh, we're, Basically, uh, fast forward, uh, it's been one month. It's been one month since we have been planning our new event, which were, which is uh, basically Agajeta Bullambhaj. All of our other events were small scales. We also had other collaborations with some big names, you could say, such as Unilever, Innovation, BD, so Bangalink and but we still didn't, uh, we still weren't sure because we really needed or wanted our members to actually work wholeheartedly for the club, not just, not just because we tell them to do so, right? So uh, when uh, we felt that uh, all the members actually want to wholeheartedly contribute to the club, that is when we started working on our nationwide business competition called Econcilium. Which will be uh, which will be launching very shortly. Uh, right now, uh, our marketing team is working phenomenally on working with some big names, uh, which I can reveal to you right now. Our academics team uh, very strong. They have been working on the cases for the competition and the structures. Our promotion team is gearing up. And uh, with that, I really, again, I'd like to come back to the fact that how we uh, as a club wanted to give the members something in order to, for them to give back. I think that was a very, a very wise decision which all the EBs uh, took. Uh, and it really, and it has been working really well for us. So I think that was the strategy we took uh, on leading the club. And uh, yeah, what I said, it has been wor working really great for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Arafat, for explaining clearly like what are the strategies that you have got and what are the plans that you had for the pandemic. And I'm really inspired to see your leadership and also the decorum that your club has organized even in this pandemic situation, and you are working tremendously in your campus. So wish very good luck. So uh, now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Raihan Ahmed, who is the president of North South University Communications Club. So hello, Raihan, how are you? Oh, uh, I'm fine, I'm fine there. Thank you so Should much for attending. So, yeah. My question to you is like, uh, as we know, the communications club has been excellent in terms of like nurturing the written and verbal communication skills, providing mentorship and also organize national level competitions for a very long time. 
So like, how do you plan? Uh, how do you tap addresses the corona pandemic for the last few months? And what are the changes that you have brought in your overall operation and also organize events and engagement for the club in recent times? Yeah, okay. I hope, I hope you can hear me. Um, it's really nice to be here. It's really nice to be here with uh, all the other leaders of North South, Kirk, North South University and TFB. We've been working with TFB for a long time. It's, it's, it's more like two years plus we've been collaborating with TFB. Uh, it, it, it started from a previous panel. And uh, if I jump into the question, um, if I jump into answering that, uh, it was really tough. It was really tough to start uh, the executive body during the pandemic as uh, our, pa our panel started on back on uh, November of last year. And um, I, I think well, Asir Arafat will also um, uh, agree with me that uh, when a new executive body comes into the panel, uh, comes into the club, it's, it's something like Amra Egdum scratch Tegishur Gutsi. It's like starting the club activities from scratch. Because Agar panel, uh, uh, if, if we look back to the previous panel, Jokhanet and Hutun panel, they try to do something new. So uh, as we started from online, uh, everything, it was really tough. It was really tough to uh, establish uh, communication among the members. Agar Jokhanet, we were back in university. The communication speed. I'm a communications club, and that's the irony. The communication speed on a The communication speed gets really slower. And uh, when uh, uh, when you when, when you start an event here in North South University, there are a lot of paperwork. So actually, even start cutting on paperwork, cut the J paperwork, the speed on a slow So the most frustrating part was uh, real realizing this uh, operations thing. We started communicating through. Trello and Discord. Discord has been a blessing for all of us. Uh, we started uh, planning our uh, uh, planning the paperwork of all our events to Trello. Then we used to uh, talk about it over Discord meetings with all the sub EBs and the EBs uh, and um, go to North South University to do all the paperwork one by one. Normally, if I talk about North South POV, North South POV, uh, North South University of every club is uh, uh, a is a base for is a reserve for its students. Uh, so North South University, the amrajita shabdish problem face which in operating is North South University. The higher thing is a different event host which by ensuring highest level of uh, health security. So a health safety secure corner for the higher thing is. North South University ki student dita hai amader ke to attend uh, particular events. So ekhane amar shabdhi bichhe suffer kuch because if you look at the current condition or the previous condition, a lot of students are living out of Dhaka. So this is this is the one part we suffered a lot. I think my university also suffered a lot for this. Eta theke ekhon amader ekhon 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 We don't have that active visa for students uh, available right now. Other than that, uh, to address the pandemic situation, uh, from the very start, we have been doing uh, a lot of short story, story writing competitions. Uh, we did a workshop, which for the first time happened through online, and it was for the first time it was really tough for us. We did a skill, uh, we did member development program by uh, collabing with Skill Hub. Uh, it's a, it's a, it was a member developing uh, program uh, that addressed graphic designing. Other than that, uh, first day Amrajita Gorachemji, we started a short storytelling program. It was to uh, neutralize the frustrating situation. Like the first day, the pandemic lockdown, we all got uh, shattered. Jack, uh, lack of communication between all the uh, all your friends, all uh, outsiders. So we take a neutralized journey. We did um, short story is storytelling program and uh, it's a writing of uh, it's writing event tarpore uh, workshop koichi tarpore amra collab koichi skill hub er sathe graphic designing er jonno and now currently we are planning for a business combination which jeta naam ta reveal korte hocche na really sorry it's it's a marketing communication business case study uh, combination uh, it is going to be intra university communication 
एम ए मार्केटिंग कम्युनिकेशन बिजनेस कम्पिटिशन एंड आई होप যে এই লকডাউনের মধ্যে আমরা ফর দ্য ফার্স্ট টাইম আমরা ওয়ান অফ আওয়ার ফ্ল্যাগশিপ ইভেন্টস করব আমরা এটাকে দ্যাটস আওয়ার প্ল্যান যে উই উইল অ্যাড দিস টু ওয়ান অফ আওয়ার ফ্ল্যাগশিপ ইভেন্টস এন্ড আই होप যদি এটা অনলাইনে করতে হয় তাহলে আমরা যেটা ভালো করে করতে পারি দ্যাটস ইট দ্যাটস দ্যাটস অল फ्रॉम মাই এন্ড थैंक यू सो मच रायहान आई हैव got to know about lots of programs and we are eagerly waiting for the program that you have not revealed the name already so let's see uh what you are bringing for the like nourishment of your club members and also uh bringing good results in some sort of like bringing extra curricular activities for the north south university people so in this stage i want to of communications of north south university social service club so <coughs> hello mahdi how are you hello hey assalam alaikum alhamdulillah ki hoste yes i'm doing fine so uh mahdi uh, as we know uh, like you organize a huge blood donation in every year and you also organize a, a huge competition called like socio camp and which is one of the most prominent competition for the university students so what are the some of the things that you have uh, your club are doing during this pandemic situation to make continuous impact on students and also the people of the society that you always work for the betterment so how did you plan to tackle the challenges uh, in this covid-19 situation and also how are you planning to like continue your journey to like um, like make progression in your club activities uh okay th uh, thank you bhai uh, the first of all ami shobai ke dhonobad janacchi ar dhonobad janacchi teach for bangladesh ke ssc ke social services club ke ekhane invite korar jonno to apne question e jodi phire jai prothome amake bolte hobe je amra university gulo of bangladesh e almost ek bochhorer rupo pore last koto 2020 er march theke university gulo shob off hoye ache to amra social services club directly kotha bolte hole amra hocche मेजरिटी क्लाबर चेस्ट मानुष जबलेस मानुषा जिला 
তো সেই ক্ষেত্রে আমরা যেটা সুবিধা হয়েছে আমরা চৌষট্টিটা জেলাতেই এই ড্রাইভটা চালাতে পারছি সেটা হচ্ছে মোট অলমোস্ট এক হাজারটা পরিবারের মাঝখানে আমরা নিত্য প্রয়োজনীয় দ্রব্য খাদ্য সামগ্রী এবং হাইজিন প্রোডাক্ট প্রোভাইড করছি এইটা করতে যে একটা মেইন চ্যালেঞ্জ সেটা হচ্ছে আমরা নর্মালি বিভিন্ন বড় বড় কোম্পানির সিএসআর ইভেন্টের আন্ডারে আমরা তাদের ফান্ডগুলো নিয়ে থাকি ফান্ডগুলো থেকে আমরা আমাদের অপারেশনগুলো চালাই বাট দুই হাজার বিশেষ সেই টাইমটাতে কোম্পানিও খুব একটা কোম্পানিগুলো খুব একটা বাজে সিচুয়েশনে পড়ে গেছে তাদের সিএসআর করার মতো এরকম ফান্ড নাই অথবা ওরকম করার সাহস পাচ্ছে না লাগাতার লকডাউন চলতেছে এখনকার লকডাউন গুলো অনেকটা মানুষ কোপ আপ করে নিচ্ছে বাট ওই টাইমটা কিন্তু সেটা ছিল না তো সেইটা যা হয়েছে আমরা নিজেরাই ফান্ড ম্যানেজ করে এই এর জন্য আমি সব থেকে বেশি ধন্যবাদ দিব আমাদের এস এস সি এর যে অ্যালুমনিরা আছে সোশ্যাল সার্ভিসেস ক্লাবের যারা অ্যালুমনি বেস এবং নর্থ সাউথের অ্যালুমনি বেস তারা আমাদেরকে যেভাবে হেল্প করছে এবং এন এস এর ফ্যাকাল্টিরা এন এস ইউ অ্যাডমিন তারা হেল্পটা না করলে এই ড্রাইভটা চালাতে পারতাম না যে ওই কোভিডের মাঝখানে এত বড় একটা কাজ এবং সেটার নাম ছিল প্রত্যাশা সেই ইভেন্টটার নাম সেটা আমরা চালাতে পারতাম না সবাইকে এটা নিয়ে ধন্যবাদ অ্যান্ড ব্লাড ডোনেশন যেহেতু কোভিডের মাঝখানে এই ব্লাড ডোনেশনটা নিয়ে একটা সমস্যা হচ্ছে মানুষ হসপিটালে যেতে ভয় পাচ্ছে তবু সোশ্যাল সার্ভিস যারা করে তারা এইসব ভয় পায় না জানেনি তো আমরা তাও চেষ্টা করছি যত মানুষকে আরো একসাথে করা যায় কারণ ব্লাড দিলে নতুন করে ব্লাড সেল বাড়ে মানুষের ভিতরে একটা ওই রকম একটা শক্তি চলে আসে তো ব্লাড ডোনেশন নিয়ে কাজ করছি আর আমরা সাথে সাথে হচ্ছে কোথায় কতটুকু করে আইসিউ আছে সেটা নিয়েও একটা ডাটা বেস করার চেষ্টা করছি কিন্তু এটা যেহেতু বাংলাদেশে কোন হসপিটালে কয়টা আইসিউ আছে সেটা এরকম কোন ডকুমেন্টের ডাটা তেমন পাওয়া একটা খুব কষ্টকর তো এটা নিয়ে একটু কাজ করছি দেখা যাক কি হয় অ্যান্ডার সিট থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ আমাদের কাছে আসলে অনেক চিন্তার ভাবনা করে প্ল্যান করার অনেকটা সুযোগ ছিল না সাডেনলি আমরা এই প্রবলেম গুলো ফেস করি তো থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ ফর ব্রিঙ্গিং লাইক ট্রান্সফরমেশন লিডারশিপ এবং আমি জাস্ট একটা এডিশনাল কোয়েশ্চেন আমার প্যানেল কে করতে চাই নর্থ সাউথ ইউনিভার্সিটি থেকে যারা লিডারশিপ পজিশন থেকে আজকে যারা প্রোগ্রামটাতে এসছেন তো নর্থ সাউথ ইউনিভার্সিটি আসলে এই যে ক্লাব কালচার নর্থ সাউথ ইউনিভার্সিটি ক্লাব কালচারটা খুবই চমৎকার একটা কালচার এবং এখান থেকে আসলে নার্চার্ড হয়ে ভালো ভালো অর্গানাইজেশনে আমরা কাজ করতে দেখতে পাই হ্যাঁ তো আসলে এই যে নর্থ সাউথ ইউনিভার্সিটি যে একটা পপুলার ক্লাব কালচার এটা আসলে মানে কেনই বা এত পপুলারিটি পেয়েছে বা হচ্ছে কেনই বা এই ট্রেডিশনটা বা হচ্ছে এতদিন ধরে কন্টিনিউসলি গ্রো করছে এবং সবাই আরো চমৎকার চমৎকার কাজ করে যাচ্ছে তো এটার পেছনে আসলে এন্থুসিয়াজমটা কোন জায়গা থেকে কাজ করে আমি ছোট করে একটু জানতে চাচ্ছি আমি প্রথম আসিফ ভাইয়ার কাছে জানতে চাচ্ছি যে ভাইয়া কি মনে হচ্ছে আসলে এটার পেছনে কারণটা কি আমাদের ক্লাবের যখন একটা গুড রেপুটেশন হয়ে যায় আস্তে আস্তে the chain keeps on মানে একটা চেইন এফেক্ট হয়ে যায় যেরকম আমাদের ক্লাবের সাথে আমাদের ক্লাবের অ্যালাম নাই বাংলা লিংকে আছে ইউনিলিভার আছে एवरीवेयर টিচ টিচ ফর বাংলাদেশে ম্যানেজ আপও আছে আমাদের আমরিন যে কারেন্টলি মেম্বার সেও আছে সো इट्स বেসিক্যালি একটা রেপুটেশন মানে ইন্টারনাল রেপুটেশন মানে ইয়ারা জানে রিজন তারা অনেক 
সো এই জায়গায় আসলে কেন এটা নিয়ে ভালো কাজ করছে বা ট্র্যাডিশনটা এরা কিভাবে ধরে রাখছে বলে তুমি মনে করো Oh, first of all, uh, if I talk about presentation skills, it's, it's uh, money, the total credit goes to our faculties. Karen, uh, it, it doesn't matter, not so, if you have currently BBA and CEC after presentation, they are all in this. And our faculties are really serious about it. So I think that active pressure keeps uh, motivating our students, our, my fellow uh, not in a serious to be good at presenting. And other than that, if I talk about the club culture, ক্লাব কালচার দুটো কারণে অর্থ হচ্ছে ফেমাস একটা হলো যে আমি ক্লাব করি না এটা বলার জন্য এটা এটা অনেক স্টুডেন্টরা বলে যে আমি ক্লাব করি না আমি কোন অর্থ হচ্ছে ক্লাব বিং করি না এন্ড সেকেন্ডটা হলো যে অ্যাজ ইউ নো আমরা ওপেন ক্রেডিট ইউনিভার্সিটি ইউনিভার্সিটি আমাদের ইউনিভার্সিটিতে দেখা যায় যে এমনও আছে যে সকাল আটটা একটা ক্লাস হইছে আমার এমনও সেমিস্টার আমার গেছে যে আমি আমার চারটা কোর্স ছিল আমার সকালে একটা ক্লাস শুরু হয়েছে আরেকটা ক্লাস আমার দুপুর দুইটা and mane ekhon currently what are you going to do in this big uh, free time so a free time to eat korte hole dekha jacche je clubbing is club ei time to jodi club e invest kori i i i got i get to learn something ami jeta mone korechilam when i joined club je amar eto gulo free time not such university time university byre na je i i want to do something in my university so ami club e je dekha jacche je i got to learn a lot of things i got to do my networking i think networking is one of the Uh, biggest thing jeter jonno not so the clubbing don't like famous because a uh, university ami jeta mone kori je amar faculty amake jeta sobshomoy bole ashche ekdom first theke je university is the crucial jinish holo to be uh, serious about networking the the bigger your network is the bigger chances of you getting successful is after you complete your university and eter ekta proman jodi bola hoy je i i landed my first job uh, that was a part timing job through my club alumni যে আমার ক্লাব অ্যালামনাইজের থ্রুতে আই গট রেফার টু আ প্লেস এন্ড দ্যাট আই দেন আই গট মাই জব সো দিস ইজ ওয়ান গুড থিং অ্যাবাউট নেটওয়ার্কিং থ্রু ক্লাব সো দ্যাটস এড আই থিঙ্ক যদি কাউকে আমার কাউকে যদি আমি বলি যে কেন ক্লাব জয়েন করবো দিস ইজ দ্য দিস ইজ দ্য বিগেস্ট থিং দ্যাট ইউ গেট টু ডু আ লট অফ নেটওয়ার্কিং ইউ গেট টু লার্ন আ লট অফ স্টাফ যে এটা এটা খুব ছোট একটা জিনিসও হতে পারে যে হাউ টু বিহেভ উইথ পিপল কি মানুষের সামনে বলা যাবে না বা কি মানুষের সামনে বলাটা রুড বা কিভাবে মানুষের সঙ্গে বিহেভ করতে এগুলোও আমরা ক্লাব থেকে গেছি ছোট ছোট জিনিসগুলো উই গট টু লার্ন ইট ফ্রম আওয়ার ক্লাব ফ্রম আওয়ার সিনিয়র যারা ক্লাবে ছিল সো ইয়া আই থিঙ্ক জয়নিং নর্থ সাউথে একটা ক্লাব ওয়াজ আ ভেরি গুড ডিসিশন ফর মি and i i want to encourage all the students che ekhon jehetu online e hocche online e it's really good je amra kintu kono kichu bondho kore rakhi nei online er truth e we are communicating amader je gbms hocche monthly semester wise amra gbm kortechi amra events kortechi so kono kichu theme nai as asir ekdom first e bolechil this is the new normal so i would encourage je online hok er offline it's it's always good to have extra curricular activities in your university life um uh, amar ekhon currently internship shesh hoye jacche i'm currently working at an agency so we can know that it was a very big push because of my extra curricular activities so i highly encourage uh, jara amar juniors are ache to join clubbing because i don't think so it's a waste of time at all thank you thank you, thank you ryan so ryan club yes sure sure another act of corporate culture like the essence that from the start it really prepares us preps us up thank you thank you same Asif. thing yeah mane ami jodi aita jinish boli je this is mane after the faculty that we learn from our faculties right i mean also the university the onik bari face hoye je amader faculty e bole je do you do club e tumi ki clubbing korte so mane na na to university ki koro it's not only about learning ekhane sob kichu korte hobe so extra curricular activity is a very good thing that's it thank you thank you rayan so uh, i want to ask mahdi je like ei je amra club korchi othoba hocche amra bibhinno dhoroner extra curricular activity engage hocchi je kono volunteer activities boli ba teaching assistant hisebe ei kaaj kora boli kono na kono bhabe amra extra curricular er sathe involved thakchi so oi jaga theke tobar ki mone hoy je ashole professional implications ta ki je amra je ei je grooming ta amader organization gulo theke hoy ba teacher der sathe kaaj korte giye amader hoy faculty der sathe shetar ashole professionally jokhon amra kaaj kori as you already know je amader fellowship program e jokhon amra recruit kori amader ashole ekta leadership ta ke amra 
ফোকাস করে থাকি সেটা যেই জায়গাতেই হোক যে আসলে একটা ক্যাম্পাসে একটা চমৎকার অর্গানাইজেশনে হোক বা ফ্যাকাল্টিদের সাথে হোক তার লিডারশিপ অ্যাক্টিভিটিসটা আসলে যাতে চমৎকার হয় তো ওই জায়গা থেকে আসলে যে প্রফেশনাল জায়গাতে আসলে লিডারশিপটা কিভাবে হেল্প করে বলে মাহাদি মত আচ্ছা ফার্স্ট অফ অল ক্লাবিং এন এস ইউতে ক্লাবিং বলতে আমি ফার্স্ট অফ অল এখান থেকে শুরু করি যারা কারেন্ট স্টুডেন্ট আছে কারেন্ট স্টুডেন্ট বলতে কারেন্ট ইউনিভার্সিটি স্টুডেন্ট ওদের মধ্যে একটা কথা চালু আছে নর্থ সাউথে বারো মাসে তেরো পার্বণ তো বারো মাসে তেরো পার্বণ কথাটা কোথ থেকে আসছে বারো মাসে তেরো পার্বণ হচ্ছে এই ক্লাবগুলোর জন্য নর্থ সাউথে বারো মাসে কোনো না কোনো ইভেন্ট থাকে তো ইভেন্ট থাকার কারণে যেটা হয় নর্থ সাউথ ক্যাম্পাসে অল টাইম একটা ওইরকম জয়ফুল একটা জয়ফুল একটা সিচুয়েশন মানে একটা কি বলবো মানে সবসময় একটা ইভেন্টের একটা মৌসুম চলে নর্থ সাউথে হ্যালো আই হোপ এভরিওয়ান ক্যান হিয়ার মি তো এই জিনিসটা হওয়ার কারণে নর্থ সাউথের ক্লাবিং কালচারটা অনেক বেড়ে গেছে এবং স্টুডেন্টরা অনেক বেশি উদ্বুদ্ধ হয় আর ক্লাবিং জিনিসটা হয়েছে কি ক্লাবিং জিনিসটা হয়েছে আমি আসিফের কথার সাথে একমত যে ক্লাবিং আমাদেরকে কর্পোরেটের একটা ভাইব দেয় সকাল থেকে রাত পর্যন্ত আপনি যে প্রেশারটা ফিল করবেন ক্লাবিং করার সাথে সাথে একাডেমিক কারিকুলাম কারিকুলামের সাথে সাথে ওই যে প্রেশার নেয়াটা আপনাকে অ্যাডপ্ট করতে শেখায় সেটা পরে কর্পোরেট লাইফে যে যেহেতু আমি আস্তে আস্তে কর্পোরেট লাইফে ঢুকে যাচ্ছি কর্পোরেট লাইফে যে এটা খুব 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 মানে হার্ডলি এটা খুব কাজ করে হার্ডলি আই মিন খুব শক্ত ভাবে এটা আমাদেরকে হেল্প করে নর্থ সাউথ এই যে নর্থ সাউথের সামনে ফাইনাল এক্সাম শুরু হবে আমি পনেরো তারিখ থেকে এই পনেরো তারিখ থেকে দেখা যাবে পনেরো তারিখের আগে আগে বিভিন্ন কোর্সের রিপোর্ট জমা দেয়া প্রেজেন্টেশন তারপর ভাইভা ফাইনাল এক্সামের প্রিপারেশন সব কিছু নিয়ে স্টুডেন্টটা খুব ফ্রাস্টেড এজ লাইক মি আমিও এখন যেরকম ফ্রাস্টেড সেরকম ফ্রাস্টেড ফ্রাস্টেড কেন নর্থ সাউথ খুব প্রেশার দিচ্ছে ফ্যাকাল্টিরা খুব প্রেশার দিচ্ছে বাট ইন ফিউচারে এই প্রেশারটা যে আমাদেরকে কিভাবে হেল্প করবে সেটা আমরা এখন বুঝতেছি না যারা কর্পোরেট অলরেডি ঢুকে গেছে অথবা ঢুকতেছে তারা জানে আর এই জন্যই বলি যে টিচাররাও আমাদেরকে এর সাথে সাথে উদ্বুদ্ধ করে একাডেমিক কারিকুলামের সাথে একাডেমিক কাজকর্মের সাথে ক্লাবিংটা করা তাহলে যেটা হয় যেটাই বললাম লিডারশিপটা বিল্ড হয় আমাদের যে সাব কমিটি আছে আমাদের সোশ্যাল সার্ভিসেস ক্লাবে অলমোস্ট ছাব্বিশ জন সাতাশ জন সাব কমিটি আছে অফিসার সহ ওদের প্রত্যেকের মধ্যে না একটা লিডারশিপ কোয়ালিটি আছে ওরা আমাদের জুনিয়রদেরকে যেভাবে হ্যান্ডেল করে এবং আমরা জুনিয়রদেরকে হ্যান্ডেল করা মানে যে শুধু এই কাজটা কর ওই কাজটা কর তা না আপনি যদি কখন আমাদের জুনিয়রদের সাথে কথা বলেন দেখবেন যে ওদের পার্সোনাল বিভিন্ন বিষয় ওরা ওই সিনিয়রদের সাথে শেয়ার করে একাডেমিক যে কোনো বিষয় শেয়ার করে এটার মাধ্যমে হয় কি একটা বন্ডিং ক্রিয়েট হয় আমি নর্থ সাউথ ইউনিভার্সিটি সোশ্যাল সার্ভিসেস ক্লাবে ঢুকি ব্যাক ইন টু থাউজেন্ড এইট জানুয়ারি অলমোস্ট আমার চার বছর হয়ে গেছে এই চার বছরে আমি চারটা প্যানেল থেকে অলমোস্ট কম করে হলো দেশ বড় ভাই বড় আপু পাইছি এবং আমি কখনো একাডেমিক্যালি কোনো ধরনের প্রবলেম ফেস করলে আমার কর্পোরেটে কোনো ধরনের প্রবলেম ফেস করলে আমার ক্লাবের ইভেন্ট নিয়ে কোনো ধরনের প্রবলেম ফেস করলে আমি তাদের কাছে গেছি তাদের কাছ থেকে যে কোনো ধরনের দিক নির্দেশনা নিয়ে কাজ করে গেছি এবং নর্থ সাউথের আমাদের যে ফ্যাকাল্টি অ্যাডভাইজাররা আছে আমাদের মোফাসেল হোসেন স্যার হচ্ছেন আমাদের ফ্যাকাল্টি অ্যাডভাইজার তারপর আরো বিভিন্ন ক্লাবে সব ক্লাবে একজন করে ফ্যাকাল্টি অ্যাডভাইজার আছেন তো আমাদের স্টুডেন্ট অ্যাফেয়ার্স অফিসের যে গৌর গোবিন্দ গোস্বামী স্যার ওনারা আমাদেরকে যেভাবে হেল্প গুলো করেন এই জিনিসগুলো আমাদেরকে আমাদের লিডারশিপ কোয়ালিটি রাখে আর বিল্ড আপ করে আর বুস্ট আপ করে এমনি জন্মগত ভাবেই না প্রত্যেকটা মানুষের মধ্যে লিডারশিপের কিছু না কিছু হলো কোয়ালিটি থাকে সবাই যে ওই কর্পোরেট লাইফে যে লিড করবে তা না সবার মধ্যে লিডারশিপ কোয়ালিটি থাকে এক একজন এক এক জায়গায় যে সেটা প্রকাশ করে তো নর্থ সাউথ এই জিনিসটা খুব খুব শক্ত হবে চেষ্টা করে যাতে মানুষের ভেতর থেকে স্টুডেন্টদের ভেতর থেকে লিডারশিপ কোয়ালিটিটা আসে এবং এগুলোর কনসিকুয়েন্সেস এর জন্যই কর্পোরেটে নর্থ সাউথে স্টুডেন্টদের একটা বিগ ইম্প্যাক্ট পাওয়া যায় প্রত্যেকটা আপনি বাংলাদেশি কংলোমেরেটস বলেন অথবা মাল্টিনেশনাল কোম্পানি বলেন প্রাইভেট ব্যাংক বলেন সরকারি ব্যাংক বলেন বিসিএস বলেন সব জায়গায় নর্থ সাউথ এর স্টুডেন্টদের একটা বড় ইম্প্যাক্ট থাকে এবং ওই অ্যালোমনি বেসটা স্ট্রং হওয়ার কারণে আমরা আরো ভালো করার চেষ্টা করতে পারি থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ মাদি সো এতক্ষণ ধরে যত কিছু জানতে চাইলাম আসলে 
এর বাহিরে আসলে আমি একটা জিনিস সবার কাছে একটু জানতে চাই যেহেতু হচ্ছে আসলে আমরা এই লিডারশিপ গুলো ক্যাম্পাস থেকে আমরা পাচ্ছি যে কোনো অর্গানাইজেশনের সাথে কানেক্টেড হয়ে আমরা আসলে রিবিল করার চেষ্টা করছি আমাদের নিজেদের আমাদের জার্নিটাকে ডিজাইন করার চেষ্টা করছি সো তোমাদের বা হচ্ছে যারা প্যানেলে আজকে আছে তাদের কেন মনে হয় যে আসলে আমাদের যে ইয়াং জেনারেশন আছে ইয়তরা আছে তাদেরকে আসলে সোসাইটিতে ইনভেস্ট করার একটা বড় জায়গা আছে হ্যাঁ সো এজ ইউ নো টিস ফ্রো বাংলাদেশ ইজ ওয়ার্কিং ফর Uh, eradicating education inequity and also there are lots of organization who are directly or indirectly uh, connecting with uh, like serving the society like if we talk about corporate sector that the csr activities there they are being connected with uh, like serving the society you can consider like uh, development organization that are directly actually uh, issue cause nie kaaj korche ebong ashole society the impact create korar chesta korche and also government officials that are bibhinno jayga theke sob shomoy society te contribute korar chesta korche so why is it so important to contribute for the society so this is an open question uh, anyone from the panel can like answer i guess বাংলাদেশের কেসে উই হ্যাভ আ লট অফ পোটেন্সিয়াল আমি একদম আরবান রুরাল সব একসাথেই বলছি উই হ্যাভ আ লট অফ পোটেন্সিয়াল সো ইন দ্যাট কেস এই টিচিংটা ইজ ইটস অলরেডি বিন এস্টাবলিশ ইটস দ্য মোস্ট ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইটস দ্য মোস্ট ইম্পর্টেন্ট টু ইনক্রিজ দ্য ভ্যালু অফ আওয়ার হিউম্যান রিসোর্স এন্ড ইট ক্যান অনলি বি ডান থ্রু টিচিং সো these type of organizations such as the teacher of bangladesh they are really playing a significant role and it needs to be played and it it should be applauded and anyone who anyone at the micro level theke shuru kore anyone who basically jay jay mane agay ashe towards this it should be applauded thank you ওকে প্রীতম ভাই এই কোশ্চেনটার অ্যান্সার দিতে গেলে আমার হয়তো আমি কাউকে সবাইকে একটু পার্সোনালি অফেন্ডেড করব বাট বাংলাদেশের কনটেক্সটে যারা সোশ্যাল সার্ভিস আমাদের সাথে আমরা সরাসরি যুক্ত আমরা তো সোশ্যাল সার্ভিস করি ঠিক আছে সোশ্যাল সার্ভিস মানে হচ্ছে আন্ডার প্রিভিলেজড মানুষকে ফাইন্যান্সিয়ালি কোনোভাবে বেনিফিটেড করা অথবা তাদেরকে কোনোভাবে তাদের লাইফ স্টাইলটাকে একটু উন্নত করার চেষ্টা করা বাট এইভাবে না আসলে একটা সাস্টেনেবল সলিউশন পাওয়া পসিবল না কারণ যেমন ধরেন আপনারা তো টিচিং নিয়ে কাজ করছেন আমরা যদি মানুষকে শিক্ষিত না করতে পারি আমাদের যদি মানুষের শিক্ষার হার না বাড়ে সেই ক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু আমরা সব পুরা সোসাইটিকে আফল করতে পারবো না কারণ যেমন ধরেন আপনারা যে ফেলো নিচ্ছেন ফেলোশিপে নিচ্ছেন আপনার কিন্তু কখনোই একজন আন্ডার কোয়ালিফাইড কাউকে আপনাদের এই ফেলোশিপে নিবেন না ঠিক না এটা সত্যি কথা বড় বড় কোম্পানি গুলো কখনো কোনো আন্ডার কোয়ালিফাইড কাউকে নিবে না সেই ক্ষেত্রে একটা কথা হইতেই পারে যে আপনার শিক্ষা নাই বলে কি আপনার কোনো ধরনের যোগ্যতা নাই অবশ্যই আছে কিন্তু ওই যে একটা সার্টিফিকেট তো দরকার আমার বুকিস নলেজটা তো দরকার সেই ক্ষেত্রে এই যে টিচ ফর বাংলাদেশ সহ অন্যান্য যে ধরনের আহ অর্গানাইজেশন কাজ করছে তারা মানুষকে শিক্ষিত করার জন্য যে কাজটা করছে এইটা সমাজে খুব ইন লং টার্মে সমাজে খুব বড় ইম্প্যাক্ট রাখবে আমরা সোশ্যাল সার্ভিস করি তো অনেক বাস জায়গা নিয়ে আমরাও দেখা যায় যে আমাদের একটা ইভেন্টের অংশ হিসেবে একটা স্কুলে প্রতি বছর যে কোনো একটা আন্ডার প্রিভিলেজ স্কুলে কিছু শিক্ষা সামগ্রী প্রদান করে থাকে কিন্তু টিচ ফর বাংলাদেশ যেটা করছে তারা এই ইউনিভার্সিটি স্টুডেন্টদের হেল্প নিয়ে ইউনিভার্সিটি স্টুডেন্টদেরকে ফেলোশিপের আন্ডারে নিয়ে এসে তাদেরকে শিক্ষক হিসাবে কাজে লাগিয়ে একটি শিক্ষিত জনগোষ্ঠী তৈরিতে যে কাজটা করছে সেটা আসলে অতুলনীয় এটা গভর্নমেন্টের পর্যায়ে থেকে তো হচ্ছেই এবং টিচ ফর বাংলাদেশের মতো বড় বড় অর্গানাইজেশন গুলোরও হওয়া দরকার থ্যাংক ইউ thank you thank you so much uh, mahadi so like this is very inspiring mahadi as we are working to educate all all the children of bangladesh maybe maybe we can see a bangladesh where like all the children are getting the sort of education that we always talk about right so uh, let's uh, get into a discussion i'm going to sh uh, share a slide 
with the audience so that they can know like what we are doing uh, as an organization and how we are bringing the leadership uh, among the fellows who can like contribute in the society and also bring transformation that uh, Asif and Mahadi has already said. So let me share my screen. So I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, thanks. Thank you so much. So I'm Preet Makraborty. I'm currently working as a recruitment and selection team associate of Teach for Bangladesh. So uh, before that, I joined Teach for Bangladesh in 2019 cohort, and I finished my fellowship in 2020. Then I joined Teach for Bangladesh as a recruiter. So before that, I was a graduate of University of Dhaka. So like after completing my graduation and post-graduation, I was uh, thinking about like uh, doing such a job that will create the mindfulness among the people and also create awareness and also uh, I can create impact in the lives of the people and also utilize my leadership skills after like working lots of years in clubs and organizations. So I found Teach for Bangladesh really interesting and I applied for the fellowship program that I got selected in 2019. So as an organization, uh, our vision is uh, we believe that all children should receive an excellent education that empowers them to realize their full potential. As we know, uh, some of you said like uh, students are very much powerful whenever they are born. So students are born powerful. So if we uh, can consider like if we can provide excellent education to the students that are like that will build a nation we can utilize their full potential, then we can imagine a, an excellent Bangladesh in the long run. So to make our vision into reality, we have launched this program, which is called the fellowship program, which is our flagship program. So we have launched this program so that the capable, committed and compassionate leaders who knows about education inequity and who are very much interested to work tirelessly inside and outside of the classroom in the society uh, to build a whole school and whole society system so that it impacts on the children directly in their education and also their buildup. So uh, we believe in a theory, uh, this is the theory of change. So in uh, every year we recruit lots of amazing leaders from lots of universities. So you can see some of the leaders from North South University who had joined this fellowship program with us. And we actually recruit these promising leaders so contribute to the society and they can also bring the best out of them so that we can transform the leadership and we can also utilize uh, the most of them. So I hope we're fine. I hope everything is fine. So yes, so as we, are, we were talking about recruiting promising leaders, so we recruit some of the promising leaders from North South University and also other private and public universities and also foreign universities. And we bring them uh, in six week pre-service training. We call this Winter Academy. And also they experience a full-time two years teaching experience. We give them full-time professional development. We organize monthly professional development session for all of our uh, fellows. And also we provide fully reimbursed uh, postgraduate diploma from Breck Institute of Educational Development. And we also like organize community action projects. So by doing these lots of things, our fellows are like bringing transformation in the society. As, uh, as an organization, we believe after completing the fellowship program, they will be part of the system that allows inequity to exist. So we believe Lots of fellows, maybe they can contribute in the ICT sector, maybe work in the corporate sector, maybe teaching curriculum, finance and development sector, but keeping in mind that they have to change the system that allows the inequity and also create a just society for the people. So moving forward, uh, as we know in this pandemic situation, there were uh, digital divide in uh, like Bangladesh. So 
as we can see, like 60% of our students uh, don't have like education access. And hello, can you can everyone hear me? Yes, we yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. Okay, so there is some network issue, so that got confused. So in this pandemic situation, 60% of our students don't have internet access and 50% of our students don't have, uh, have directly internet access and 20% of our students have indirect internet access. So this digital divide also creates that inequity that we want to solve, but our fellows didn't stop. They were distributing workbook for continuous learning for the students. They organized online and mobile-based learning system for the students so that their learning doesn't hamper. And also we were giving psychosocial support to our fellows so that, uh, and we were also like supporting our students by giving them psychosocial support. So our coaches were like giving psychosocial support to our fellows and our fellows were also giving support to our students. And also we uh, have distributed lots of food reliefs to our students and their families so that they can uh, carry their life forward. So socio-emotional learning has been a very uh, great initiative that Digital Bangladesh has initiated. As we know, like uh, in this situation, lots of people are facing lots of troubles in terms of like uh, getting the emotional and mental support. So our fellows are continuously supporting the families and the students so that uh, they get uh, the education, uh, proper education, and they also get the right amount of attention so that they can keep themselves happy and safe. So in our fellowship program, what are the opportunities that a fellow get? So by joining Tishpur Bangladesh Fellowship Program, our leaders join in a global movement. This global movement ensure all the children of the world can receive excellent education. So by joining Teach for Bangladesh, uh, you will be joining a global movement of Teach for All. We're working around like 60 countries. So our fellows always receive a monthly stipend of uh, 30,000 taka per month and also receive a health insurance for their precautions. So there are an amazing opportunity to pursue postgraduate diploma in Prague Institute of Educational Development. And uh, this fee is fully reimbursed by Teach for Bangladesh alum, uh, Teach for Bangladesh team. So we organize this course for our fellows so that they can learn about the education system, the policy, the pedagogy, uh, the teaching system, the classroom management, the societal impact, and also uh, lots of theories so that they can uh, directly uh, make an implication in their society and also bring changes in their schools. So there are lots of opportunities of, of getting career counseling. As you already know, Teach for Bangladesh nurtures a huge community of the leaders from different universities. So they join the fellowship program and after fellowship program, they become the alumni. So we have lots of networking opportunities. And also uh, some of you say like networking means get working. So we have this huge network who always help us, support us as an alumni in terms of our employment, in terms of creating new opportunities and bring social innovations in education and also in the other development areas. So uh, those who are interested to like uh, apply for higher studies, we also have this opportunity on the Teach for All network. So you can see we have some uh, best partnership uh, partnership with lots of best universities around the world, like Harvard Business School, John Hopkins University, Oxford Business State Business School, Columbia Law School, and lots of universities are there where you can also check your eligibility and you can also apply for full funded scholarship. If all the criteria meets, then you can definitely take this opportunity from if for all network. So you can see our global network. We're working around like 60 countries. We're working in every continent to make this uh, vision into a reality. And you will be amazed to see like lots of North South University uh, fellows have already completed their fellowship program and making tremendous progress around like serving the society. 
and also making significant impact. We can see Nadia Afrin, who was my friend and who is working as an educator and social justice activist. And here's Nashia Tasnim, who, was, uh, who is an associate of Teach for Bangladesh, uh, Teach for Bangladesh development team. And here is Nazmul Alam Robin. He's one of my friends who is working as a researcher and Tasnim Kibriyabu, who has been working as a senior technical officer of CARE Bangladesh. Nusra Choudhury, she has been my friend and she is working in Bragg as an assistant manager of curriculum development and training. So as I was talking about coach, so uh, in this fellowship program, there will be a coach who will be guiding you in your professional and personal journey. So Mr. Hasibur Rahman Shwangbhaya, who is also an NSU alum and who is currently the manager of training and design of Sishwa Bangladesh. And he is an amazing coach and like he has uh, made me realize that every sort of problems has a solution. And he has like, uh, he is motivating lots of uh, the fellows to make progress in our society and also making significant impact. So uh, this is all from my side. So I'm inviting all the NSU leaders who will be completing um, their like graduation within this year and also completed their uh, graduation before this year. You can definitely apply for this uh, fellowship opportunity and also you can get connected to your North South University alum. Thank you so much. So in this stage, I want to welcome uh, Mr. Shujon Daring Dada, who is the manager of fellowship recruitment and selection of Teach for Bangladesh. So welcome, Shujon Dada. Thank you so much, Pritam, uh, for inviting me. I hope you can hear me. Right. So yes. right, my name is Shujon, and I'm currently working as a manager in the fellowship recruitment and selection team. Happy to be here. Um, I have been working for Teach for Bangladesh for quite a while. I mean, I also joined as a Teach for Bangladesh fellow way back in 2014. I was in the second cohort of Teach for Bangladesh fellowship program. Later on, after completing this program, I applied for a permanent position. And since 2017, I have been working with the recruitment team. So basically the recruitment team is assigned to kind of like, you know, our main job is talent acquisition we recruit fellows for the fellowship program. So over the last three, four years, I was, I was part of that team that recruited aspiring change maker from top universities of Bangladesh and abroad. And it's more than 250 plus aspiring leaders that we have been able to recruit for this fellowship program. Um, and I'm really super proud to kind of like, you know, say that out loud that we have been doing that for years after years. So moving forward, what I wanna emphasize that who are the people that we look for? So if we go to the next slide, uh, we can see that what are the things that is being demonstrated by successful candidates? So first of all, uh, a, an individual should have a good track of their academics. What we truly believe that academics might not be the most important thing that reflects a person's uh, potential, but in the same time, that also reflects his or her sincerity towards academics. So we do also need someone who at least kind of like, you know, have a minimum CGP of three uh, and above that really kind of like, you know, help them to outstand in the overall selection process. On the other hand, we have outstanding leaders from top university, top, from top NSU clubs of um, here today from different clubs. Uh, so, that is also something that we really, really encourage people to have. People who have demonstrated leadership in different forms, right? Leadership comes in different shapes and forms. But we also do emphasize people to have extracurricular uh, experiences, club activities, you know, uh, leadership uh, experiences through voluntary work. I think those really kind of like, you know, signifies an application. So we also need that. And on the other hand, we also need people who are outstanding in terms of interpersonal communication skills. And that is specifically in Bangla and English. As our fellows, they work directly in the community. And in the same time, they also receive all their trainings um, in English, the, the communication tool is English. So we need people to be efficient both in Bangla and English. So that's another criteria. And on the other hand, what is really important is people who really do believe in Teach for Bangladesh mission and vision. 
they believe that, hey, education inequity is my problem. And I do want to walk towards kind of like, you know, eradicating this uh, issue from Bangladesh moving forward beyond fellowship. People who really have that ambitious belief are also very much encouraged to apply because what we believe that Teach for Bangladesh Fellowship Program is really different from all other management training programs or all other leadership development pro program in one aspect that our main purpose is to create those leaders who will be contributing in reshaping Bangladesh, in, in, in really bringing a systemic change in the long run for Bangladesh from their own sectors. And they can be from engineering background, they can be from business background, but they will still have that belief that, yes, I do trust in the potential of Bangladesh. And as an active catalyst, I want to uh, you know, keep contributing in that perspective. So we do need those dreamers who really believe in our cause. Uh, so moving forward, I also want to share a few other things. And that is people who are you know, interested to apply for this fellowship program, what do they have to do? So it's very simple. I mean, people who are interested, people who will be graduating by 5th October this year, you can be a final semester student. If you're you know, just about to graduate, I think you are eligible to apply. If you're a Bangladeshi citizen and you will, uh, if you think that you will be able to, you know, uh, complete your undergrads by 15th October, you are encouraged to apply. You just have to go to our website or you can also uh, pay a visit to our social media sites. They also have their links. You just simply need to register. But after registrations, you also need to have kind of like, you know, other selection stages. So we have internationally recognized you know, a fantastic selection process that also gives the candidates a different experiences around how to kind of like, you know, write their SOPs or how to really, you know, uh, have an experience of an internationally standard rigorous selection process. So they also, you know, get to, you know, experience that through our selection process. So the deadline for application is 1st October, but we also have, uh, you know, the selection is basically on a rolling basis. So if you apply today, within a week, you will be invited for the next round of selection, even before the deadline. So that's also something that we put it in terms of, you know, providing better quality uh, candidate experiences for the people who are really interested. So yeah, uh, better late than never. If you're interested, go and apply. So now I want to give my floor to Samri who is going to share her own experiences around um, how to really outstand in our selection process because it's very competitive and only 6% of the applicants received offer. So if there are like 100 applications, only six people got selected for this fellowship program. So Samrin, uh, I will just move it. Uh, I will just pass it to you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Shirinda. Thank you so much for introducing me. So hi, this is Samreen. I graduated from NSU in 2019 in accounting and finance. I simultaneously worked as a TA and taught at a school. So teaching has always been my passion from a very early age. And I and like everyone, I thought that accounting finance where I would get into a corporate job. Uh, I like accounting and finance, but I very soon realized that this is something that would not bring me joy in the long term. I was happier teaching at a school than choose a job in corporate. But I wanted to do something more. I wanted to help the community. So with the experience that I've gained, Teach for Bangladesh Fellowship is the perfect platform where my experiences mattered. Not just I'm developing myself professionally, but my work will actually make a difference. We all come from a very privileged place. And I'm not saying that in terms of monetary terms, I, our education and the knowledge that we acquire from our community is something that many children in our in the in our areas are deprived of us fellows we get the opportunity to help them realize their dreams and and help them create the position in their lives that would take them a long way so i came across teach for bangladesh before uh, when i was in nsu but i could not do it because of my previous commitments i saw that my skills matched well to the requirements of teach for bangladesh and i honestly thought this was best suited for me so i got right into the process of applying for the fellowship. Let me take you to the steps of our selection journey. Firstly, you have to register and apply. Second step is a virtual written test. 
third step will be a short phone interview. And lastly, the final step is an assessment center. Aconic to details a breakdown for you how each step will appear. Firstly, for the online registration, I would request you to go to the Teach for Bangladesh website and register. After, after registration, an email containing the full application link and a unique registration number will be received. Using that link and number, you get started on filling the details of the form. And the best part is you can save the progress and return to the form anytime you can. Frankly, it to borrow form, but trust me, it's not lengthy as it looks. Personally, that every detail in the form matters and completing the form didn't feel hard because as I went filling on the details, it strengthened my belief that I can be a challenger to take on this um, noble cause. I have what it takes. Every smallest of smallest experience that you have ever done towards education, towards improving community counts. Teach for Bangladesh values those experiences and I felt as if this is ideal for me. Next step for the shortlisted applicants is an hour long written test. Again, test not to worry. Um, test not to worry um, because um, no prior preparation is needed. It will consist mostly of MCQs that will test you about situations, very basic questions about situation Kiki Corona. After you pass this test, you will be invited to a 30 minute long phone interview with our selection team. You can choose a time slot of your preference and the interview will mostly consist of questions that you have answered in the application form. And further, just to know you a little bit better, so phone interview is for that. And finally, phone interview successful applicants will then be invited to a half day virtual assessment center. The team will send you a uh, uh, instructions beforehand and email on how to prepare for the assessment. The selected team will have to sit for a group discussion and are required to do a class demonstration. And after that, they will sit with the selector for an interview for one or 1 1.5 hours. Various questions will be asked uh, along with further questions from the application form. After this step, the final result for the, of, for the 2022 cohort will be published and that's the selection journey for a teach for bangladesh fellow i honestly had a wonderful time in going through the stages of each session it was a unique uh, selection process the selection process has had me reflect on the determination that i have for the fellowship journey and i know all my other fellows are in the cohort will feel the same now i would like to invite you to join this challenge in tackling education inequality through teach for bangladesh and encourage others who are interested in taking up a role which not just serves an integral role in providing quality education, but allows you a strong professional development. Thank you so much, everyone. If you have further questions, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we have got to know a lot from uh, our uh, accepted fellow who has done amazing in uh, her assessment and also got selected as a fellow. So uh, now I want to take some of the questions in our comment box. So I want to invite uh, Shujon Daring Bhaiya for speaking about like, uh, can we take, uh, can we uh, like tell a bit more about the Winter Academy training program? So can you please uh, answer this question? So impressive. I think, I think Winter Academy is basically the first step towards moving towards the fellowship program in general. So people who got selected for this fellowship program are invited to participate a six week long uh, pre-service training, which is basically called the Winter Academy. And it usually takes place in the uh, November, uh, late October, November in that period of time. So this is a once in a lifetime experience, I would say, because we know we recruit people from different diverse backgrounds, right? People coming from engineering background, we have people from work, we have people from business background, from NSC, we have all other, uh, you know, subjects uh, uh, from all other academic field. So they really do not, might not have a teaching experience. So what we try to do in this winter academy is to give them an intense training around how to be successful uh, in their own classroom so that they can really provide the supports that our students needs on the ground. But in the same time, we also 
run this winter academy to let our participants know more about community. Because as they will be actually working for the community during the fellowship and also in the moving, uh, moving forward, they should have a very good idea about how this uh, community works and what they, what they truly need. So we also have number of sessions on team building, how, how, how they can you know, execute, plan and execute outstanding projects and also about planning. So they do you know, uh, get supported and, and, and they do receive trainings on plannings, uh, on time management, on their uh, mental well-being and whatnot. So the basic principles of this, fellowship, uh, of this winter academy is to train them and also to build those muscles so that they really become a successful fellow and leaders moving forward. So there are also like other you know, leadership trainings that happens during this Winter Academy. So Winter Academy is full of excitement and all the folks from you know, different uh, areas of Bangladesh on different academic field, they come together and they have a wonderful experience that they really can share uh, their entire life later on. So yeah, that's what uh, Winter Academy is all about. So this year, uh, Winter Academy is probably going to be held online or virtual uh, due to this pandemic. But before that, we used to have this in person. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sada. So we have another question, like, uh, if I can't apply now, can I apply at a later date? Yes, definitely. If you uh, feel like you will be applying for the next year of fellowship program of 2023, you are welcome. So we have another question. So how do we handle our emotional burnout as 90% of our club associations, our activities are now in online? What could be your suggestions for all of us regarding this? So I think Shujanda can answer this very well. I think, I think it's the question for the panelists. I think they are the one to kind of answer that in terms of, uh, I think as it's, it's solely about club activities and stuff, I, I think the floor is open to, all other panelists uh, to answer that because they are the people who are leading the organizations and they might have wonderful suggestions for the youngsters or freshmen in the universities right now who are thinking about maybe joining the uh, clubs, but maybe they're also worried about how they can balance these two things, ECAs and also their academics. And I think the floor is open to all other panelists. Uh, hello, um, actually, uh... আমাদের এই বাজে সময়টাতে কোভিড 19 সিচুয়েশনটাতে সবার যেটা করতে হবে পার্সোনাল জায়গা থেকে যে কখনো বসে থাকা যাবে না ফ্রি টাইম থাকা যাবে না নিজের জন্য ফ্রি টাইম মেডিটেশন সেটা অন্য কথা বাট কাজ ছাড়া যেমন ধরুন এখন আমাদের সামনে সেমিস্টার ব্রেক আসছে সেমিস্টার ব্রেকে জাস্ট একটু বসে থাকলাম বাসায় থাকলাম এই কাজটা করা যাবে না আপনাকে নতুন স্কিল শিখতে হবে দরকার হলে বই পড়েন দরকার হলে মুভি দেখেন দরকার হলে গেমস খেলেন দরকার হলে টেলিভিশন দেখেন দরকার হলে আম্মুর সাথে একটু কাজ কাজ করেন দরকার হলে আব্বুর সাথে একটু কাজ করেন এই এক দেড় বছর না বসে থাকতে থাকতে আমাদের ভিতরটা পুরো শেষ হয়ে গেছে ওয়ান কাইন্ড অফ রাইট কারণ বাসায় আর কত থাকা যায় সত্যি কথা বলতে বাসায় এই যে চার দেওয়ালের মধ্যে বন্দি হয়ে আর কয়েক মাস পর পরই দেখা যাচ্ছে যে একটা করে কোভিড এর একটা ঢেউ আসতেছে আমাদের আবার লকডাউন হয়ে যাচ্ছে তো বাসায় বসে থাকলে জাস্ট বসে থাকবেন না কাজ করবেন যে কোনো একটা কাজ স্কিল করেন স্কিল শিখেন এখন শুধুমাত্র কোর্সেরা ইডিমি এগুলো ছাড়াও বাংলাদেশের অনেকগুলো আছে ঘুরি ঘুরি লার্নিং বহু বৃহি ওদের কাছে ওদের কাছে বিভিন্ন কোর্স করেন টেনমেন্ট স্কুল আছে ওদের কাছে বিভিন্ন ধরনের কোর্স করেন কোর্স গুলো করলে আপনার টাইমটাও পাস হবে নিজের জন্য কিছু করতে পারলেন বিভিন্ন ধরনের ওয়েবিনার আছে এগুলো করতে পারবেন তাহলে দেখবেন যে এই মেন্টাল ইলনেসটাকে ওভারকাম করতে পারবে সবাই থ্যাংক ইউ maybe we can also think about like how how effectively we manage our time as we know like prottekta manusher life e 24 ghonta shomoy ache but professionally ba hocche amra jodi student thaki seta club hok ba seta amader academic kaaje hok sei jaygay ashole amra kibhabe sei shomoy gulo ki utilize kortechi so oi jinish ta ashole ekta 
স্কিল যেভাবে আসলে আমরা আমরা আমাদের সময়টাকে ম্যানেজ করে প্রায়োরিটি গুলোকে সেট করে আসলে কাজ করতে পারছি ওই জিনিসটা আমাদের বার্ন আউট হওয়া থেকে আমাদের ডেফিনেটলি হেল্প করতে পারে সো আমরা জাস্ট আরেকটা কোশ্চেনে যাচ্ছি সো আমাদের আরেকটা কোশ্চেন ছিল যে मडल लाइफ যে আমাদের একটা মাত্র জীবন এবং উই রিয়েলি হ্যাভ টু থিঙ্ক अबाउट व्हाट इज माय पर्पस इट्स रियली इंपॉर्टेंट दैट टू फिगर आउट योर नॉट स्टार যে নিজে নট স্টারটা যদি আমি নিজে ফিগার আউট করতে পারি ইট রিয়েলি গেটস ইজিয়ার টু ইউ নো ফিগার আউট व्हिच डायरेक्शन डू आई रियली वांट टू गो सो फॉर ईच ईच एंड एवरी सिंगल इंडिविजुअल फॉर वाचिंग दिस आई वुड रियली एनकरेज यू टू थिंक अबाउट व्हाट डू यू रियली वांट टू डू एंड हाउ डू यू रियली वांट टू put a legit impact for the society with your work i think that's the only thing that really helped all the leaders across globe to really figure out how they can really make their life worthwhile and 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 really effective for the society in general they can be in engineering field they can be in it sector they can be in any other sector but they can re- they really have the immense power to think more creatively around how my work is going to put an impact for the society for the development of our nation in general or beyond bangladesh right so that's really important and and what we try to do at tish for bangladesh is to you know bring those potentials to 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 really figure out who are the potential leaders that bangladesh really needs so this fellowship program is designed and customized in that way that we want to bring those ambitious leaders with dreams and hopes for the society so that moving forward they can also think more creatively around how their work is going to put a legit impact on the ground and we have thousands of really inspiring stories where we have seen people maybe coming from uh coming from from pharmaceutical background right? i i i want to really talk about munia who was a graduate from jahanginagar university she studied uh pharmacy later on she joined a big firm uh pharmaceutical company later on but after that he, uh, she really kind of like you know uh, took a pause to kind of like you know really think about what is uh she really wants to do later on she joined this fellowship program um and then and then worked in number of top development organizations later on so she she worked on a a uh, project which is basically a japanese franchise uh, called kumon and she was one of the first kumon instructor to establish kumon in bangladesh that impacted thousands of kids in bangladesh later on she took a transition moved from brack kumon and joined one of the uh, leading organization in development say for children and she is basically working on the field of uh, you know supporting the refugees that we have in coxes bazar and she's one of the finest leaders that i have always aspired to kind of you know be uh, so we did this fellowship program and whenever i see munia kind of like you know uh, really working to focus on what she really wants to do and later on putting legit impact on the ground for example while she was a teach for one this fellow she used to teach 60 kids but now she is impacting 60 million lives through her lives and and i think that's that's the take away that i also want to kind of you know uh Uh, want others to take that how you can leverage your impact moving forward with your career you can be in corporate field but there are also like lots of 
things that a corporate giant can do to really bring a fantastic transform in the lives of general people. For example, I just want to give an example of Volvo, which is one of the uh, automobile giants in the world. Uh, so in late 80s, they came up with the safety belt, right? And they really didn't put any patent. JQ a safety belt and near they can kind of like, you know, uh, incorporate those in their automobiles and that, that later on really saves lives. So just think about, it's not, our life is really not all about ourselves, but it's all about how we are really kind of like, you know, uh, uh, making meaning through our life that impacts people's lives. So that's something that I wanted to kind of share. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tata. I think that this is very much inspiring uh, to like work in this way to make the longer impact in your own life and also for the people of uh, we are like facing this corona pandemic within the organization and also uh, one question what is our changes that we have process this year so as we are facing corona pandemic so what are the processes that we are following in our recruitment process so is there any change is there any adaptation and anything like that yeah, definitely. So usually all our uh, recruitment and selection processes, uh, there was a huge component where we try to kind of like, you know, uh, do all our selection stages in, in person. But now we have shifted completely to virtual setting. For example, our assessment center, which is basically our final stage of our selection out of the four. So usually that was in person. In, in the previous years. But now due to pandemic, we also have to think about uh, absolutely giving mm, the best customer experience, the best candidate experience that our candidates can receive. But in the same time, we also have to think about their safety and security. Uh, so we have shifted everything virtual and uh, that's the major shift that, that, that we have been uh, you know, anticipating in our selection procedures right now at Teach for Bangladesh in the fellowship uh, recruitment and selection procedures. Yeah. And it's also convenient. I mean, people are in different places right now, right? So they can, they can, they can do the phone interviews, you know, from anywhere in Bangladesh. They can also uh, join the, the virtual assessment center from anywhere from Bangladesh. They just need to, uh, they just need to have a good uh, internet communication and kind of like, you know, devices that they needed, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Shujanda. So maybe we are on the verge of our uh, conversations today, but uh, before like uh, like leaving this conversation, I want to hear uh, a small uh, gratitude or a small thing that uh, that we do believe in. I do have a lots of gratitude towards the people who always help us in terms of like promoting Teach for Bangladesh Fellowship Program in North South universities. And also we can see lots of our partner organization are uh, here today with us. And also they actively help us in terms of like bringing this awareness in front of uh, the people. And also they actively share our posts and also make people aware of the things that we do. So I want to thank all our panelists today for coming to this space and I have my full gratitude with you guys. You are doing absolutely amazing in your roles, in your clubs and organization. And I do have respect for you as you are supporting this amazing cause and you are contributing your best to keep Bangladesh learning. So uh, maybe we can take uh, one or two uh, comments from uh, some of our panelists. So if you uh, want, you can also like uh, put a comment uh, on this program and also share your reflection. Yeah, as, as I have been saying from the very beginning, the, what Teach for Bangladesh is carrying out is a very, very noble cause. And uh, I, I really, really honor it. And what uh, everyone uh, coming forward to Teach for Bangladesh, and I want to let everyone who's watching that this is a very good opportunity to do something for the country and uh, we should all take part. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Asif. 
But yeah, I would also like to add that this is a very prestigious opportunity. Uh, I'm adding with Asif here that Teach for Bangladesh gives us the platform to express ourselves in many ways. That that you've also said that before when we started out as um, fellows that this is some this is an experience of a lifetime. This 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 opportunity is not going to help us in making a difference in Bangladesh, but this will help us in any kind of profession that we go into in our future, be it a corporate job, be it a teaching job, be it uh, in a NGO, anywhere we go, these life skills that we're going to learn through this two year fellowship, this is going to help us a lot in the future. So I would really encourage everyone who are wanting to make a difference, wanting to make a difference, not only in their lives, but for Bangladesh, for the children that they want to do. Teach for Bangladesh skills help future to my plans to me court the chatumi to the bio coach at the chow, they shake each of the chow, teach for Bangladesh. So I think that this is a perfect place to start. Um Jita, you want to aim for. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Teach for Bangladesh ka oshya oshya dhunno baad je tara idhorna ta initiative niche. Onik din thore niya ashche. Ebang Teach for Bangladesh shudh matro je keep Bangladesh learning. Bangladesh ke shikhache tana in future tara job sector ek ta bore impact rakbe bolle asha korchi. Ebang pitom bhai ke kono bola hai na pitom bhai mota ta organize manush jekhane ashe. I hope among Shadha Shate Shujan Bhai or also Simran Apu, Jarajara Asset, other Shobai Kini, Teach for Bangladesh, Onigura Gajabe, and kudos to Teach for Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mahadi. So thank you so much, all the panelists, all the guests, and uh, all the people that who are watching right now. So I will invite all of you guys. Uh, to like apply for the fellowship program. If not, then try to uh, come up with all of your solutions to bring uh, the best Bangladesh. So I would like to uh, invite Mr. Shujan Daring Dada for like uh, concluding this conversation. First of all, uh, thank you, Pritam, once again for the floor. I really want to thank each of our panelists today uh, for their enthusiasm and also for their really valuable you know, reflections around how NSU leaders are also kind of like, you know, uh, building that culture where, where they're really nurturing the future leaders through their club activities, through their work. And, and that is really a legit work that you guys are doing. And it's very much equivalent and important as academics. That's what I really believe. So thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you so much for all your support for Teach for Bangladesh. But we believe that the cause that Teach for Bangladesh is working on is a shared responsibility. And it's really not possible. This movement is really not possible without the help and contributions and support from all aspects of uh, all the stakeholders that we have in, in, in general in our society. And, and, and you know, people often say that life is a race. I really do not consider life as a race. If it's a race, it's not a sprint. I would say it's a, it's a marathon where we kind of like, you know, need to hand over the baton to the next generation uh, for a better cause. And I believe that through your club activities, you guys are also kind of like, you know, handling those patterns to the next generation of leaders, not only for NSC, but for Bangladesh moving forward. And we do have some level of you know, connections in terms of the vision that each of Bangladesh have. We do want to encourage people to invest on in education because that's our future. Without education, maybe the next coming 50 years of Bangladesh will be in darkness. And we need your support, all of your support to make that happen, that we are really, um, you know, uh, we are really going for a better Bangladesh that we really envision. I'm not only Bangladesh, but this is our, uh, this is our route where we have to, you know, kind of like, you know, make it better for the next generation. Uh, so thank you everyone for your active participation, also for your patience. Um, it was a really good evening, and um, I, I really want to finish this session with this positive note that thank you, everyone, for your uh, support. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.
थैंक यू भैया बाय गुड बाय थैंक यू भाई